from 
us today. We can name our children any names that come unto us. But for the Israelites, for the Jews, name telling was a serious business because they believed that a name could foretell the future of a child. So as Rachel's life was departing from her, she named this son of hers, Benon. And the name Benon means son of my sorrow. And upon hearing this name, the father of this child, who was Jacob, changed the name of this uh, child from Benon, that was supposed to do with sorrow. And he thought to himself, if this child takes this name, Bell, his future may be associated with sorrow. So Jacob changed the name from Bell to Benjamin. And Benjamin means son of my right hand. A name that could foretell good luck in future. So Rachel did there on the way to Ephraim. But the question can be, why did Rachel die so young? This was a beloved wife of Jacob. Jacob had four wives, two from his uncle and two um, from the maid servants of these wives, Leah and Rachel. So in total, Jacob had four wives. And this was a man of God. The question can be, why did God allow uh, polygamy in the Old Testament times? The reason, God allowed men to marry many wives in the Old Testament times was because there were many wars that were fought then and many men were dying in battle. This left a lot of widows in the nation of Israel. And for this reason, God permitted polygamy so that these widows, whose men were dying in battle, could be taken care of. But in this time we are living in, God is not permitting us to marry more than one. So for us, it's only one wife. For them, God could allow, but Jesus told us that for Christians, it's only one wife. And when we marry two or more than that, to us is regarded as a sin before our God. So Jacob had four wives. The first one was Leah, the second one was Rachel, the third one was Zippah, and the fourth one was Bria. From Leah, Jacob had six sons. Reuben, the firstborn, Simeon, the secondborn, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon. From Rachel, uh, Jacob had two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. From Zerubbabel, the next servant, Jacob bore Gad and Asher. And from Bigam, Jacob had Dan and Naphtali. Together, these sons made what we call the twelve tribes of Israel. He also had daughters, but according to the Jewish tradition, women were not counted. But one of the known daughter of Jacob was Dinah, because she had a story in the Bible. So, as Rachel was giving birth to this last son of hers, Benjamin, her life departed from her. 
He did so young. But among these poor wives, it was this Rachel who was the most loved because she was beautiful and she's the woman that Jacob loved with all his heart. He worked for 14 years to get this beloved wife of his Rachel. At first, when he completed the seven years that uh, were regarded, uh, of him to work for Lama in order to marry Rachel, he was given Leah instead of Rachel. And he had to wait for another seven years in order to marry this beloved of his Rachel. The question is why did Rachel die so young? Why did Rachel die on the way? to Bethlehem and Jacob was left out with those three wives that he did not put much love on. For us to understand the concept of this text, we have to go to Genesis chapter 31. Genesis chapter 31 and as a historicity of this story. Jacob was a brother of Saul. You remember the well that Jacob stole the blessings of his father and of his brother Esau. And because of that, he fled to Mesopotamia, Syria, present day Syria, to the house of his father, Laban, where he stayed for 20 years. And it was there in Mesopotamia that this child of Isaac, this son of Isaac, who stole the blessings of his brother Esau, married these wives. After living for 20 years, we hear from the Bible, chapter 31 of the book of Genesis, that Jacob thought it wise to return to the land of his father. I am reading from verse 1, Genesis 31, from verse 1. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all his wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable towards him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family name, and I will be with you. Jacob stayed in Lava's house for 20 years, and we hear from the reading of the Bible that after these 20 years, Jacob could hear the sons of Lava speaking to themselves that, can you see, this man, Jacob, has taken away everything that belonged to our father. And when Jacob uh, cast his eyes to Laban, he could see that the countenance of Laban had changed. It was not as before. And Jacob thought to himself that it's now time to depart from this house of Laban. I can't stay any longer since Laban has changed. And everywhere I go, the story is about mine, that I am a thief of stolen what belonged to Laban. So Jacob thought to himself that it was time to go back to his fathers, the land of his father, Canaan. And in a dream, the Lord God appeared to him, telling him to return to his father's family. And he promised him that he is going to accompany him. And this is where Jacob is departing Mesopotamia, the land of Laban, to go back to the promised land, the land of his fathers, which God promised to his great, uh, grandfather, Abraham. And Jacob started off. He looked for an opportune time when Laban had gone away to share his sheep, and Jacob gathered all his 
and started off to the land of his father, the land of Palestine, Kenya. After 20 years in Syria. But there is one thing in this text that has caught my attention and is in verse 2. It says, And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable towards him as before. When Jacob was coming from Canaan to Mesopotamia, Laban received him jovially. But after these 20 years, Jacob could notice the change in the face of Laban. And Jacob could notice the change that was there in the face of all the signs of Laban. And he thought to himself, surely this is not a place to live. Things have changed. I have to go back since this place is not favorable for me. You know, brethren, in this life, our people, that if we cling to them, they are always a source of our misery. In this life, they are people, they are those that if we cling to them, they always contribute to our troubles. In this life, our people, that if we cling to them, our life is always on the negative side. And when you notice that, it is time to stay away from them. Jacob couldn't stay at Lava's place any longer because the continents had changed. In this life, there are friends, there are people who always contribute to our failure. We have to flee from them. Why do we always claim to people that give us no peace? Jacob had an open door waiting for him to decide. You know, brothers and sisters, every danger in this life has got an escape point. The problem sometimes is we take too long to notice. After Jacob realized the change in the countenance, he started off to the land of his father. The continents of Laban as to the face of the earth, the face of the world that we are living in. Remember, when the face changed, it was time to start off. When the face of Laban changed, it was time to start off. When the faces of the sons of Laban changed, it was time to start off. This man had a home. He had to go back home because Mesopotamia couldn't hold him anymore. As I compare this passage to the world that we are living in now, I see so many similarities. I remember the ponds that we used to fish in our childhood days back then and the stream that flowed all year round. When I go back, they are all dried up. Isn't the face of the world changing? I remember the bananas that we used to eat back home in your districts. They are nowhere to be found. Isn't the face of the world we are living in changing? And isn't this telling us something to prepare for home? Brethren, I remember the love mothers had to their children. Now they are born to be abandoned in toilets. Even the first of the world we are living in changing. I remember the rains that began to fall in October and they would fall up to March. Now we expect these rains in December, January, but March they are gone. Isn't the first of the world changing? Isn't this telling us to prepare for home? For Jacob, it was time to go back home. I do remember the discipline that was there in our country when I was young in primary school. And when the nation 
asked them was being sent even 500 meters away. We could turn the attention until it was sung and it was over. It's true, we feel all your hearts. But today, all oh, that loyalty is gone. Now, all oh, is gone. We are now remaining with the world of demonstrations. And everywhere are these demonstrations, even in our houses. Mom, I'm not going to eat until you give me that thing. And we're forced to the demands of these little ones. Demonstrations are starting for the houses, even most of Adventists. We are remaining with a world of disease and pestilences. We are remaining with a world of corruption that you to economic misery. We are remaining with a world of wars and conflicts, a world full of immorality and satanism. That's the world we are living in. And that when the continents of this world we are living in is turning, is it not time to start off? For Jacob, the continent, the change in the continents, told him one thing, it's time to go back. You have got a home. It's time to go back to your home. Go back to your father's land. Go back to your parents. Don't cling to this land that is giving you trouble and no peace. Is on the world we are living in telling us to prepare to go home. A world where the poor and the defenseless are always marginalized. A world where the pious and faithful have no place to be accommodated. A world that is a theater where fools are decorated by human madness and given beautiful titles, proclaimed even as role models. A world. That is immoral. A world where innocence makes no sense. A world where truth is not only rare but nowhere. A world where prodigality and immorality are amplified by the echoes of human rights. A world where evil is marveled as civility. A world where theft is the leisure and hate a treasure. A world where the voice of the wise is bold of as liars jovial walk in lead carpets. And in the horizons of their thinking capacity, the only way for them to sustain themselves is to uproot the justice system that censures them. That's the kind of the world that you and I are living. And when all this is happening, one thing should come to our minds. This is not the place to stay. My brothers and sisters, the world we are living in is not a good place to stay. It's not time to prepare for home. We have put a home. We have put mushrooms in heaven. And Jesus went there. Can you fancy? How many days did God take to create the world? How many? Six. How many years have gone since Jesus told us he's going to prepare a place for us? If this beautiful world we are living in was created in just six days, what about the mushrooms created in thousands of years? How beautiful is heaven? When humans can't be trusted anymore, when the climate can't be relied upon, when the smells of nuclear smoke is everywhere, it's time to prepare for home. To Jacob, Laban's countenance told him one thing, it's time to go. And Jacob started off to his father's land. He, started, he prepared his family for the promised land once again. And he left at a good time when Lava was not there. One thing that interests me is that Jacob prepared his family 
for Canaan. He called his wives, called his children, they discussed this thing, and together they started off to Canaan. However, it was the duty of each and every family member to depart responsibly. The duty of this man, Jacob, was to prepare his family for Canaan. But it was the responsibility of each and every family member to depart Syria responsibly. And from what we have learned, and uh, what we are finding from this, from the first chapter of the book of Genesis, may I read with you verses 22, 22 and 23. And Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. Then he took his brethren with him and pursued him for seven days journey, and he overtook him in the mountains of Giri. So when Laban came, he was told that Jacob had left, and Laban did not just stay idle, he began to pursue Jacob until he found him a three days journey. That's the devil now. When we want to free ourselves from the yoke of the devil, he's always there following us, wanting us to return to him. So we hear that Laban pursued Jacob until he found him. And when he found him, this is what transpired. Verses 26 to 34. Verses 26 to 34. And Laban said to Jacob, what have you done? Then you have stolen away and... And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? That you have stolen away and known to me and carried away my daughters like captives taken with a sword? Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me and not tell me? For I might have sent you away with joy and songs, with timbre and harp. And you do not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night saying, Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. And now you have surely gone because you great long for your father's house. But why did you steal my goods? Then Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Perhaps you take your daughters from me by force. With whomever, in quotes, with whomever you find your ghost, do not let him live. In the presence of our brethren, I defy what I have of yours and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two men's tent, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered in Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the house of Goiath, put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of women is with me. And he searched, but did not find the house of idols. Remember the question. Why did this beautiful woman, why did this beloved woman, Rachel, die so early? Even before Jacob reached Bethlehem, even before Jacob reached Ephraim, why did Rachel die so young? As, as and we found out from the story that though it was each and every member of his responsibility to depart from the land of Mesopotamia, to depart from the house of Laban responsibly, 
This beloved wife of Jacob Rachel stole away the idols of Laban. Mesopotamians were idol worshippers. They had they kept idols in their houses, and there were many of them. Many of them idol of fertility, idol of of everything that is on idol. So this a woman Rachel took the idols that belonged to her father, and when Laban came to search for his idols. This woman, Russia, kept these idols, sat upon them, that Laban could not find them. He sat everywhere in the tents of these, uh, uh, of his children, the tent of Leah. He did not find them. He sat the tent of Bilhah, did not find them. He sat the tent of Zerpa, the tent of Russia. He did not find his idols because Russia had sat upon these idols. But remember, the husband to this woman, Rachel, was a God-fearing husband. Jacob did not worship idols. Because to him, there is God in heaven, worthy of worship. So Jacob worshipped the heavenly God. And that his wives are worshiping these idols, Jacob was taken by surprise. That's why he is answering his father-in-law that come and search in the tents. If ever you find these things, you claim to be yours, you claim that you have stolen, that person should not live. So search. You can search. And whomever you find giving this idol of yours, I am not an idol worshiper. I worship the heavenly father. When you accuse me of stealing your idols, search among us. Myself and whatever I have, if ever you find these idols, that person must not live, must die. And he is not knowing that is his beloved wife, rest, who is giving this ghost. He is not doing. And by telling that, Jacob is saying, even rest must die. Things to remember. Bethlehem, which was also known as Etrath, was a city that belonged to God. In Bethlehem, Jacob will be worshipping the heavenly God. In Bethlehem, Jacob will build altars where he will be sacrificing to the Lord. In Bethlehem, it's only God and God alone. So no idols are supposed to accompany this man Jacob to Bethlehem. Because Bethlehem is a sacred city of God. Jesus is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. No idols in Bethlehem. So the question, why is Rachel dying so early, so young? This beautiful, beloved Jacob, why is she dying so early, so young? The answer is straightforward. The idols he sat upon. But this man, Laban, was looking for his idols. It was upon herself to say, These are your idols. Take them back to Syria. Take them back to Mesopotamia. Instead of giving him his treasure, idols, he kept them to herself. So, if, he, if she claims to the idols, it means that in the same house that God is supposed to be worshipped, somebody in that same house will be worshipping idols. And God is saying this. God is sensing this. He says, what type of worship is that? That in the same house, somebody is worshipping me, and in the same house, another one is worshipping idols. I have to purify my house. And this one though loud, this one though beautiful, this one though what, what, what. But she must not go into Bethlehem. She must not go into Bethlehem unless she gives back the idols to the owner. Brothers and sisters, 
As the first for the earth is telling us one thing. That soon Jesus is going to come to be in the clouds of the sky. As the world is telling. And the signs are everywhere. We also must remember. No idols in heaven. And whatever we have loved in this world. Whatever is making us happy. Whatever is feeding us. If it is contrary to God's will. That is the idol we are sitting on. And God is saying no idols in heaven. Heaven is for the pure in heart. Heaven is for all who are sanctified with the blood of Jesus. Heaven is for all who commit themselves to the worship of the Lord in heaven and God alone. If we divert our spiritual attention to things of this world, God is saying no idols in heaven and like Rachel, we are going to be left on the way. Why did Rachel die so young before Ether? The answer was the idols she loved. The idols she kept. Do you know the only reason people will fail to make it in heaven is the things they have loved so much, the things they love to do, the things they keep and cherish that are contrary to God's will. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. No. Salvation is for you. And the decision to do what is right is for you. It's not can never be influenced by the man you have married or the woman you have. It's up to you to tell him that I am a worship of God in heaven. As far as I am concerned, this I cannot do. As far as I am concerned, this I cannot do because I watch the heaven. So the decision is yours alone. And whatever will make you fail is from you and never from your neighbor. Never from your family. It's from you. That's why God is saying the two will sleep on the same bed, but one we're going to be taken, is going to be taken, and another one will fail him. On the same bed. Meaning to say, salvation is for everybody. But the decision to be saved is individual. An individual decision. The question is, what do you think can take you away from your salvation? What things have you loved so dear that you can't give them back to the devil? Say, devil, take your things. I belong to God. What is it that you are loving so much in this world? You know yourself that this is going to distract my journey to heaven. But you have loved those things so dear, you can't give back to the devil. What is it? What is it that you have sat on like Rachel? Remember, no idols in Bethlehem, no idols in Ether. In his eschatological apocalypse, the man Paul saw the Christians of the last time, last days, as we near the cross of Earth's history. Paul was given an insight on the start of the last time Christians. That we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verses 1 to 5. A picture of the Christians, the people of the last days. Paul says, I was shown that the people living in the last days of time will be lovers of money, will be proud, blasphemous, lack of love, brutal, corrupt, lack of self-control, lovers of pressure, and all evils in them. Right in this church, we've got people who are not stunned for an hour listening to God's way. They're always short checking their time. But they can stand for two hours watching the soccer. And their legs are never tired. And when the soccer ends, they say, ah, in Jijewa, what are you doing? But they were standing. But they can't sit to listen to God's word for an hour. They're always complaining. It has taken so long. It has taken so long. That's the kind of Christians that we have. 
lovers of praise are the lovers of God. Is it the pressure of the idol you are sitting on? Is it the love of man and the pleasure you are sitting on? Is it the head that is you are keeping? The, the, the eye you have sat on? God is saying, the devil is looking for his things. May we please hand over whatever we have to the devil. Because we must go clean to heaven. Do you know the confidence that is there? The confidence is that Russia wanted to go to Bethlehem, but did not want to leave away idol worship. So he said, I must go to Bethlehem, but this I will not leave. And in the church today were both Christians who want to go to heaven, but they don't want to live sinful life. They say, I will go there, but this at that time. Ah, man, so sweet. I will go with my other time. God is telling us, for heaven, we must be pure. People want heaven, but do not want to get rid of their sins. So they think, so we think, God is going to permit us into heaven with our sinful nature. My brothers, no. My sisters, no. We have to get rid of whatever we have sat upon and go to Jesus' claim. Do you know we are about to reach home? We are about to reach home. There is an animal called a snake. A snake undergoes a certain, a certain process in this life that is known as Ek disease. Ek disease. In ek disease, a snake loses his skin. It loses its skin and starts anew. So it's a process whereby um, it by losing that outer skin of, of itself, uh, we hear, we read from the books of science. That blood skin contains um, harmful substances to the snake. So it releases those harmful substances as it goes and goes that process of uh, releasing its skin, the process of disease, sharing of outer skin. And we also read from the books of science that as a snake goes through that process, it, uh, th that outer skin prevents that snake from growing. So in order to free itself and to grow a flesh, it releases, the snake releases that outer skin so that it can start afresh. Brethren, isn't a personal disease needed in us? Is it the time to share off whatever is making us sin. Is it the time to share off whatever debt we are keeping inside, like a snake, a personal exodus is needed in us. We must always remember no idols are allowed in Ephraim. So, because of that, the ratio must be bad. Nothing unclean will also enter heaven. And because of that, let us give back what belongs to the devil. Let us give back. Stay pure, remain pure before our Lord. And as he appears in the clouds of the sky, we must hear from him saying, This is my son that I died for. This is my daughter that I died for. And I am back to take him to my kingdom, where we will worship God and go God alone. May the good Lord help us as we cleanse ourselves, as we do this personal exercise in waiting for his second coming. And to him be the glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Amen.